So today's message is about loving people. And that's what one of the, that was so close to the heart of Jesus. He was so concerned and it's one of the great commandments that he left behind for us. So we have Matthew chapter 22 verses 30, uh, 39 and in 37 to 40 Jesus spoke of the great commandment. The great commandment was the great commandment. Go, the great commission we can, the great commission is go and make disciples. What's the great commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength. And then Jesus said, the second is like unto the first. Just as much as we love the Lord with all our heart, he said, the second is like unto the first. Not less, not more, but Similarly, it's as important. Did you get that? Second is like unto the first. And this is what Jesus said, Matthew 22, can, you can't get the scriptures? Wonder with the lotion you can help. Is she here? No. Okay, Matthew 22, and, 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 and he said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments, the whole Law hangs and the prophets. Love your neighbor as yourself. Oftentimes we use this in a very common way. When it's to our advantage, when somebody is grabbing something from us, or we have a squabble with a family member, we say, love your neighbor as yourself. But this, the Lord Jesus Christ is speaking to each one of us. Because Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. He came seeking those who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. He came to do good. He came to heal. He came to soothe hearts. And He came to calm fears. Jesus came on a mission. He came to help people. His focus was on people. People were His highest priority and likewise should be ours. Our highest priority should be people, just the same way it was the Lord's highest priority. And it's amazing that Jesus very often broke all kinds of rules in order to minister to people. He demonstrated love to them and sometimes he bro broke the shut down different sacred cows in the religious system just to reach out, cross a boundary and reach out to people. For instance, Jesus crossed the boundary and broke the law in order to minister to one single woman from a village called Samaria. It was never the practice of Jewish people to go and go across to the Samaritan land. They were considered unclean, they were considered enemies of the Jews. And, and here Jesus went very purposely and he went and he was ministering to that one lady. Mind you, she was one who had messed up her life and messed up five other families. She had had already five husbands. A messed up life. Jesus broke through the boundaries, broke through religious order. It was never the practice of a, of a Jewish rabbi, a Jewish religious teacher to go and sit and talk with a woman. And at that, at 12 noon in the afternoon. So Jesus broke through because he knew that people need people. We humans need one another. This is a message that I always have to remind myself that we need one another. Because some of us are quite happy with the Lord, sitting at the feet of the Lord, right? We are, some of us are inclined that way. We are quite happy by ourselves. But Jesus demonstrated that people need people. We need one another. In my own life work, there are two incidents that I can, I often recall. Two ladies, one a very highly placed woman, much older than I am, very educated, one of the top educators in this nation even now. 
I remember when we were in Visakha Road, how she came with a file in her hand. And she said, I have visited one of the top lawyers in this country and, I have, and he has filed in the divorce papers. I just sat by her, almost by her feet, and I listened to her grief-stricken story. She had every justification to go ahead with her legal action. Her husband has been a wreck, had been a wreck, and had been so unfaithful to her. She had every reason to go ahead with the kind of action she was now beginning, on, on the course she was setting for. And as I listened to her, I, I, I said, Lord, what am I to tell her? This lady has so much grief, anger, and justice, justification to her case. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and He said, Tell her, tell her when she has finished. Listen to her and when she finishes, tell her. From John 20, If you forgive the sins of any, they will be forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they will be retained. I don't know how to communicate with this very professional, highly placed, she knew everything, she had everything right, I didn't know how to. But when she spoke and quietened down, I meekly said, you know, so and so. This is what Jesus would tell you. If you retain your husband's sins, they will be retained to his dying day. And as she heard me, I remember how she dropped that fire. And she said, what? Why are you saying that? And I showed her from the scriptures about forgiveness, about divorce, and the rest of God's teaching on it. And do you know, she left our home in Visaka Road, making up her mind that she will give her husband another chance. That she will take back those legal letters and all that she was getting on with with the President's Council, she said she'll take it all back. And I want to thank God that she brought her husband back home. And to the day he died, she looked after him. God is good. We people need each other. One end of the spectrum, another end, when I was in the village in Gonagala, you know, I had this habit every Thursday, I would walk up to the next village. The same road, the same route I would go. And go tapping on different homes as the Holy Spirit illuminated a home to me. I was young, right? And I would go and I would tap on the doors and, and whoever came I would offer a tract. And one fine day I kept tapping at a door and the Holy Spirit said, keep tapping, keep knocking, keep knocking. And as I kept knocking on that door, seemed there was no one. But the Holy Spirit said, continue, keep knocking. As I kept knocking, a little window opened and a little woman looked out. And she said, what do you want? I said, no, I only want to give you this little love letter from Jesus. She grabbed it from me and shut the door on my face. And I went back home and I came back the next Thursday, the same route, the same thing, knocking on different doors, giving a love letter from Jesus. As I keep was passing this house, the door opened and this woman came out. And she got me to come into her house, sit down, and she told me her story. Somebody had had children by her and those children were taken away and she was planning on committing suicide. She had already collected 26 sleeping tablets and she said, I am going into a far away place and I take my life. And she wrote, gave, put into my hand a four page letter, her life story. As I listened and I listened and I told her the hope she can have in the gospel. And she was marvelously converted. People need people. People need people. You may think that you are not needed. Jesus needs hands and feet. That's what the spiritual parent program is all about. People need people. And there are two 
few basic thoughts about meeting one another, right? The first is, the first I want to share, you know, I, basically, I am a builder. I am a builder. I am a builder of the lives of people. Whoever comes through my life, I find over these 34 or 35 years of my life, I have been, God has been gracing me to build their inward parts. So never let a person go away just the way he came. Uh, put your hand into the hands. Put your hand in the hand of the carpenter from Galilee and build, become a builder with him. Partner with the Lord Jesus Christ and become a builder with him. That's the highest calling that you can have in life. To be a partner in the cause of his kingdom. We can be achieve all of this world's glories. Thank God He gives us favor. Today I looked at a sister who has been blessed with such a lovely car. And I jumped up and I said, praise the Lord. Wonderful favor. God's grace. But beyond all that, the Lord gives her that car that she may drive faster in the kingdom of God. All these things will be added to us that we may follow after his righteousness. Wonderful Jesus. So as a builder, my effort is always to put my hand into your inwards and build up your inwards in prayer, in the word, in the Holy Spirit and in the ways of Christ. And as your inwards are built, you will find your outward will prosper and be in health. And in this house I always say, no cancer in this house, no divorce in this house. For this is a house that's built by the Lord Jesus Christ. It's His house and it's His kingdom that we, you and I, are about building. Isn't it wonderful? Can you put this light on for me? I'm in the dark. So as, a, as builders, there are two basic thoughts about needing one Another. We need one another. First thing, my brother, my sister, is let's stop judging people. Let's stop judging people. You know, it's human nature that there are some people who are never, never happy with anything or anyone, regardless of what you do to accommodate each one's peculiarity. That's some, some people's nature. But when we come to Christ, we are graced to give up the old ways and I am a new creation. Manumi was leading us in worship this morning. What is it to be a new creation? You know, critics often become harshly judgmental, which is, a, which is very dangerous territory. Matthew 7, 1, the scriptures say, Do not judge. Jesus, it's a commandment, we can never escape it. Do not judge. Because being judgmental, harsh and critical towards others, you know, it kills and it destroys and it dampens people's spirits. In little church families like this, you know, it, judgments does nothing else but damage small little church families. You know, I always tell you, I want to remind you this morning, this illustration. Let's keep this house with like a clear glass of water without judging one another. Let's give each other a chance. Even as Christ has given us many, many chances. You just heard Pastor, uh, Pastor Naomi Dalby saying, what? Peter should have been court-martialed. Instead, Jesus gave him chance after chance. God has many chances. He has given us many chances. So likewise, let's be extenders of the grace of God. And another thing I want to tell you, it's sad but true spirit. Among Christians, I'm not talking about the outside community. Amongst Christians, let's avoid these pitfalls. Even as we become come into the business of building others, becoming spiritual parents, giving birth to new lives in Christ Jesus. Right? One of the popular sports is 
most people fear it. I think I've served the Lord long enough to know how many times I live in Darjeeling and I have been part in listening to conversations of where we label one another. Labeling. We label people. We say, what? We say, 